All right. So the mountain you're looking at there is Mount Cameroon. And I'm going to try to convince you that this is actually the world's most interesting volcano. Um, first and foremost, where is it? Well, it's in Cameroon. It goes by other names. I think Mount Faco is a, is a local name. I looked on Wikipedia. It's like uh, Mongo Mademe or something like that's another uh, another regional name for it. it. Sits right here in the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, Sao Tome and Principe here offshore, and then Bioko Islands offshore as well. So there's a big line of volcanoes that, of course, line right up into Mount Cameroon. Makes it easy to find, Google Earth, Google Maps, or whatever. Uh, it's a very large volcano. Its summit is something like 13,000 feet above sea level, so about, about 4,000 meters, 4 kilometers. Uh, the fact that it sits here right next to the coastline makes it an incredibly prominent mountain, uh, meaning that it just sticks way up around the surrounding landscape, which of course quite low elevation. Last erupted, I think in 2012, and there's a lot of Google Earth imagery here along the top of the mountain that shows all of these fairly recent lava flows here. And the tiling here shows you that they're always trying to take new imagery, which would indicate that there's been a, a good history of a pretty recent activity. But that's not why this is the world's most interesting volcano. Uh, to understand that, you're going to have to come out here, sort of to the southeast of the volcano, and look at a much more subtle feature, which is just this dark green area on the land surface. And if we zoom in towards that, we're going to have to get pretty close down to the actual land and then turn back around and look at the volcano again. There we go. And from here, you can see that dark green area is a low line of hills, and they're they're not particularly high. Uh, right there, we got 200 feet elevation. Uh, that's about 880 feet. So you're looking at about 660 feet, about 200 meters of topographic relief. But these low hills and the volcano there, that's something like, I think it's about 15 miles or something like that uh, away from the hills. That's why this is such a cool spot. And to fully appreciate this, you got to zoom out even further. There's one set of hills there. There's actually another one on the other side. And this tends to go better with Google Maps. So if you pop out here to Google Maps, you don't get to tilt the view. But Mount Cameroon, of course, shows up very nicely. And we pull the pin out here and kind of outline the outer edges of these low hills that are sticking out away from, from Mount Cameroon there. What these are, uh, are actually thrust fault related uplifts. Uh, so they're where the ground surface is actually rising over time. Uh, and the reason that the ground surface is rising is that Mount Cameroon is so large and such a huge load on the underlying rock that it's actually collapsing and spreading outwards and pushing on the underlying rock layers and causing them to rise up uh, along those dark lines where those foothills are located. This is kind of a strange thing to think about, um, the idea of like a mountain being so big and, and, and so massive that under its own weight it collapses and actually produces features that look like uplifts that you would expect from a, like from plate tectonic movement. But you can make a physical model that is a pretty good rep representation of what uh, of what happens here. So we've got the Google Maps here again with Mount Cameroon, and you can faintly see those hills on the side of it. And what I've done here, I made a video about this several years ago for uh, for something I wrote for American Geophysical Union. Uh, you can put a layer of honey, cold honey, underneath a layer of sand, and then pour a bunch more sand on top of that. And under the weight of the sand the honey will actually start to deform and slide and produce these little uplifts along the edge of the big the big volcanic center that you've developed just by piling that sand on top of the weak honey. And what this replicates is piling a huge amount of volcanic rock on top of mudstone. So underneath Mount Cameroon, and this is what makes it unique, is very, very weak sedimentary rock, um, shale or mudstone, uh, it's weak in every case. In the case of Mount Cameroon, 
uh, there's a tremendous amount of pore pressure, of pore water pressure within that mudstone. It makes it extremely weak, and it's like building a, a building on top of a bad foundation, and that's what's affecting Mount Cameroon. So to put this in motion, you want to think about the, the weight, the mass, under the force of gravity pushing down on Mount Cameroon. It's pushing out on its flanks, and that outward movement is what's creating those uplifts uh, that are as much again as like 20 miles. I think the one on the Northwest is is fully 20 miles or about 30 kilometers away from, uh, from Mount Cameroon itself. So if you thought about these features with what's actually going on on the mountain, the eruption zone of course is up there at high elevation along the spine of the mountain. Inside the mountain, uh, there's magma being intruded and that's also sort of inflating the mountain and pushing it outward. but it's, it's huge weight. Volcanic rock is quite dense uh, and compared to that underlying weak rock, the weak stuff can't take it, pushing outward and that creates the uplift along the edges uh, of the mountain there. So in motion, and you'll need to watch this a couple times probably, it's set up as a GIF here. Uh, I'll put the link to the original video in the description where you can see it with, uh, with text and annotation. But what you want to look at here is along the edges, as material is added to the center of the model, ever so slowly, those edges push outward, and you can see this little hill forming or a ridge forming on this side, and then again on this side. So it's this kind of like mirror image setup where the big long volcano runs up the middle, and it has these two, they almost look kind of like wings or something on the on the side of it and those are the very obvious expression of that volcano being so big and so massive on top of such weak rock that it's collapsing under its own weight and i think the 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 base of the of the sliding if you want to call it that beneath the flanks is i mean it would be kilometers deep it would be you know a, a mile or more deep um so this is not simply the side of the volcano falling off it's actually having an effect that goes geologically much much deeper into the rock column um, setting up a model like this is pretty easy of course literally all you need is sand like craft store sand and something that is is weak and, and viscous like honey you can do it with um with something like a silicone sealant as well uh, that has a lot of fumes with it and whatever else. So it's a little bit more difficult to work with. But as long as the material is viscous and it can't quite support the load of the sand on top of it, it will slowly but surely over time spread and sag just like the real Mount Cameroon. Uh, I ran this a couple of times. This one's kind of interesting because you can actually see where the honey is buried underneath the sand there. And loading does not mean the GIF is loading, it means the sand is loading that honey. And again, like the other one, ever so slowly those sides push out. This one's kind of interesting because you can see sort of this whole side of the mountain shifting away. So if you let it run again, loading, loading. And when that movement starts, a huge area there is moved away from, from that central uplift on that really weak underlying layer. Now, the reason that this is is the most interesting volcano in the world is that you could go stand on top of these little ranges of hills that are on the outer edges of Mount Cameroon and look out over the landscape and then look back at the volcano and know that the ground you're standing on is literally rising slowly but surely because the mountain so far away with its huge mass is pushing on it. Uh, there's not really anywhere else on earth that you can can stand on a point on land uh, and, you know, and look back at the volcano and look out the other way and know that that's happening. There are actually two other examples that I know of, of volcanoes that are producing land surface uplift by, by sort of collapsing on and pushing on the underlying sedimentary layers. They're going to get their own video. Really cool ones. Uh, they look more like traditional volcanoes in the sense that they're like really nice, perfect cones, but they're a lot harder to appreciate. It's much more subtle. The physical scale is smaller as well. They don't have the shape of Mount Cameroon here where it's it's kind of like elongated. And 
has the underlying geology that actually allows this this movement to happen on both sides where you could go stand on it and in in the case of this one i think this one might be uh, larger than than six or seven hundred feet i wanted to say i looked somewhere and there's like a thousand feet of of topographic relief on one of these uplifts so that's extremely unique uh, if you are an engineer and watching this this might sound a little bit familiar to you it's actually the same concept uh, as something like a shear failure of a foundation. Um, I got this image off civilblog.org. If you Google shear failure of foundation, you will have no shortage of pictures. But the idea here is that a load uh, from some kind of a building directed down into an underlying material with a limited bearing capacity will actually cause that material to shear and it will produce these uplifts adjacent to the load there. That's a pretty good analogy uh, for what's going on with, with Mount Cameroon and, of course, a number of other earth volcanoes. In this case, however, this tends to happen in, in dense soils that will produce these nice shear surfaces. Uh, in the case of Mount Cameroon, it's a weaker material, but it's a material that can localize that shearing and is weak enough to shear under the, uh, under the volcanic load and produce those uplifts. Now, when you look here at Mount Cameroon there on the coast of Africa, uh, you come right offshore Bioko Island. There's actually another collapsing volcanic flank here. Uh, it is not quite the same in the sense that Mount Cameroon has failed kind of in its deeper foundation. And just from looking at, at Mount Bioko here, which you can do pretty well from Google Maps terrain, the idea would be that this might be a little bit shallower of a flank failure. Zoom it out again and you can kind of get the sense of where the side of that volcano is trying to pull away and slide out into the ocean. Uh, there are many, many, many examples of this in the Earth system and actually in the solar system as well. Um, a volcano is a huge accumulation of mass. Um, it's sort of haphazardly in many cases put together or it's um, it, it, it gets weak layers buried in it just as a as a result of the eruptive process. And of course, that is not always that well situated to let that mass be supported uh, over geologic time. Another really famous example of this and one that if you look up collapsing volcanoes is Mount Etna on sort of the east or slightly southeast coast of the island of Sicily. That's Mount Etna. If you look out here into the Mediterranean, there's this kind of outward bulge. And ultimately, um, that is an expression of the mass of Mount Etna that's bearing down also on, on pretty weak rock layers, sedimentary layers underneath there that can't support the weight. And it's causing that, that sliding to occur. This one's of great interest because if something moved very quickly here, uh, of course, it would produce a huge tsunami that would go bouncing around the Mediterranean basin, and that would be a, that would be a real problem. Uh, Mount Etna is more of a classic sort of cone shape than Mount Cameroon, so it doesn't have that kind of elongated geometry, and of course, the, the, the toe, as we call it, where the actual uplift is is developing as a result of the volcanic spreading is out here underneath the water uh, so you could go on the side of the mountain and see evidence of where the side of the mountain is actually pulling away but you can't go down and, and stand on any area that's uh that's experiencing uplift as a result of that hawaiian islands are another good example um particularly on the east coast of the big island where so much of the active eruption occurs that's fundamentally uh something that is related to ongoing movement and, and sort of slumping or pulling away of the side of the island under the load. But again, if you wanted to go down and look at the consequences of that, you would be under tens of thousands of feet of ocean water. I would say that the, uh, that the toe where the ocean floor sediments are wrinkling at the base of the big island, you know, must be 17 or 18,000 feet underwater or something like that. So Mount Cameroon, is one of a kind in the sense that you can stand on 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 little hills or almost small mountains themselves that are forming 
because the weight of the volcano itself is so great that it's overwhelmed the uh, the underlying bearing capacity of the sedimentary rock. So, like I said, there's two more of these. Uh, they're in Central America. They're going to get their own video, but Mount Cameroon is certainly worth a look, and particularly, again, using Google Maps, where you actually have a chance to see what those little uplifted hills look like.